The question you ask, yeah. other cricketers who are watching will be asking as well. Right, okay. So the main thing is for you to understand your game, and I've said this before, you need to understand your errors yeah. and your game, yeah. and after that, you can then rectify it, hopefully in a match, if you get stressed out, you start thinking back to, yeah, things ain't working out, let me take a shorter run up, man, you can even stand there and bowl. I sometimes stand and bowl, not in matches, but um, in warm-ups. Sakhtang Mushtaq told me this as well. He said, this is how we warm up. I was, I was taking my normal run and he said, no, stop, stand here, just bowl. I thought, like, okay. I found I could bowl it more consistently and actually source out your action. And the reason why is, if you're taking a run up, um, if you've got flaws in your action, any flaws won't be highlighted because your momentum of you running in fast should compensate for errors. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. But if you're standing in a position to bowling without any momentum, you have to get all your major muscles working correctly. All your action has to be absolutely perfect. If you rectify it here, you will rectify it when you're running in because that's easier. And Gareth Bowie said that as well once as well. I'd rather see somebody stand there and bowl. Um, some cricketers don't like that. They say, oh no, I want to walk. And I say, no, you know what? I like this method. I've tried it and it worked for me. Stand here and bowl. And then that's what we're going to do right now. I want you to stand. Yeah. Not in this position. This is your delivery stride. It's yeah. very wide. I want you to stand pretty much in this position. And from here, you're just going to do absolute normal bowling without me telling you what to do. And let's, what, and let's see what happens. Yeah? Go on. All right, stop. So we're not going to even take one step. We're just standing here like this. That's oh, it. Like yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. it. That's it. Okay. And from here, you're just gonna bowl. Okay. Keep them going, man. I don't even want you to put your knee and leg up just like this. Normal. Just stand here, both feet on the floor. You just go straight over. Yeah. Like that. That's it. Keep it doing it. I'm gonna see one more. Now, your left arm, you can use a bit more. My left arm, I can use more. Look, look at your left arm. Where does your left arm go? Yeah. It goes this way, yeah? yeah? Where should it go? It should be up and down. Up. Both arms should be meeting each other, going backwards. Oh, oh that's, that's it. That's it. And that was sort out a lot. So let's do that again. Uh, I find it so cool that it looks like... Yeah, it's wicked, man. Big. Because I, I haven't been told it as such. Yeah. It's all something I've just done on my And this is a major issue when your arm comes out because that means your body twists a bit and you still are twisting. And I, I want to get rid of this twist. Yes. Okay. See, I've always genuinely done that. I've, since, I've done that since I was what? What, the twist? Since I was Herschel Nets because I was told by, I was speaking to one guy, I might have misunderstood, he said that spin comes from like 75% of your body and like less from the fingers. It's more from the body. Like it, action. Okay, let's say that's true. Yeah. Um, the guys who use the body and their wrist, we'll call them international cricketers because they've <laughs> moved it to the next level, yeah? Yeah. And that's what I would like to move people to. Um, maybe that's for another video of how to use your wrist as well as your fingers. Yeah. Because in conventional English cricket, everything's talked about use your fingers to spin the ball. Yeah. But Murali and Saki were using their wrist a lot. Well, yeah. Ajman, I should say. Saki was very conventional as well. Murali and Ajma, they were using their wrist a lot. And they used to spin the ball like square at times, yeah. especially Murali, my man's just using all of his wrist. All right, we're gonna stand there, exactly the same. Yeah. This time we're gonna work with our left arm, coming straight back, and this arm has to meet, yeah? Has to meet. Yeah, let's not go too much here. Okay. So you just did this for this last ball. This time, every ball, I'm gonna tell you something different. Yeah. You went whoosh, over pivoting, as a result, arm there. It should be straight over almost. I want to see 45 degree. I don't want to see this. I want to see almost here. Leg pointing towards um, gully almost. Nothing more than that. Just coming straight back. Okay. Yeah, you can do it like this. And follow through straight if you want, if it helps you. It's good. Not too much of a twist. A bit, um, front foot should be pointing down the wicket. Alright, stop there. Let's have it so the front foot, your back foot, sorry, is like this. Your, your back foot's like this. Okay. Yeah? yeah? So that means you've got a 45 degree angle already because you're like this. You want to bring this back a bit. So now it's absolutely okay. in line. This way, your shoulders will be like that. Secondly, because you've got this straight and this straight, 
at this in 90 degree angle, one is straight, one is going that way. You probably put pressure on your leg, mate. Just chill out a bit. Just do it like this if you want to. <laughs> 45. Yeah? Okay. If you keep it like this and this like this, you're fighting against your muscles are fighting against each other. You'll probably find it when you try and do this. I'm finding it right now, I'll put a strain here. Yeah. I don't want to strain any part of my body, I just want to stand here normally. Like this. That's it. I'll start off like this. That's literally yeah. Back and forth. yeah? Okay. Whenever you like that. Yeah, bring this back a bit. A bit, bit, bit more. There you go. Like that. Yeah, that's it. Now your shoulders are in a good position. Put your hand up. Yeah. Right, let's go for it. Yeah, cool. You got very good. You go over the top quite nicely now. Okay, you finish off like that. Yeah. Not the end of the world. I need to say that for cricketers who have errors. But the main thing is you've got the hip drive going over. It's, it's very simple. And the major reason why is because your, um, the feet gap, as I mentioned before, is small. Okay. So ideally, when you're running or walking, you should be landing like this. As soon as you land like this, I, I'm guarantee you everything will go wrong again. This will collapse. You won't get your uh, hip drive over, and as a result, everything just uh, topples over. You get it? Yeah. You I'm got just trying to like put it in a way which allows me to remember it. Maybe the I'm easiest way I would say for you to remember it is no matter what I do, these two won't be wide. And I've said before at the start, this two from here to here will sort out everything on your action. What I'm trying to like, what I'm struggling to get right is, yeah. you see how you're saying that? Yeah. I feel like I'm aiming there. Do you see what I'm saying? What, you're, what's aiming there? Your hand? No, like, because my, because look, if I'm doing this, yeah, yeah, go on. my foot's pointing that way. So yeah, 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 okay. And I feel like if I line up, I'm going that way, I'm going like leg side. So, bit. what happens if you take an uh, angle and what bow? You will be like this. Yeah. Yeah. The main thing is, the main thing is you, you're going over yourself. Look at look at this uh, back foot now. Yeah. It's pointing down the wicket. That's the most important part. That means oh, right, okay. momentum's going down. Okay, I'm with. Yeah. 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 You won't find a bowler bowl like this no. unless he's taking an angle like from here, which you can do. In my entire I know he's a leg spinner, but he can't. he does it as well. Exactly. Yeah. But because leg spinners have the uh, ability to bowl slightly round arm, yeah. they can pivot round, and their pivot is different to one because they spin the ball that way, so they can afford to have the leg come round a bit everything to come round. But we're off spinning, spinning the ball this way, it's slightly different. That's why we can't afford to get our momentum and everything going around the wrong way because you get your timings wrong, you're in trouble. And especially if you haven't practiced and you're young, you want to make sure you get the basics right, then yeah, after you can start working all your variations, yeah? yeah. Well, let's stand there, about two more. The drive's good, there's nothing wrong with it. And the main thing is, you're on your tiptoes for the first time in your life. <laughs> Generally on your tiptoes. So you cheated there? Huh? You cheated, you were, your arms weren't there, yeah. and then you quickly brought it back at the last second, yeah? So there's something to remember is always when you go around. It's, it's so easy if you just do it straight. First up, you can do it like this. Yeah. There's a lot of momentum when you bend your uh, uh, um, elbow. It comes straight down. This drags everything else down this straight line. Through. Has to be, it has to be that way. Like, like. The arm is so important, the left arm. If you get that right, yeah. I can't see anyone bowling a wide. Really? You'll definitely get your line right. So my left arm goes... It goes wide. You know wide. You know. in the video, your arm goes here. Yeah. That's because you've got a bit of a round arm. Everything is... It's not a round arm. Your leg comes round. Yeah. And to, over, to compensate for the balance issues, arm is here. That's what you want to avoid. And you are avoiding it by standing from a standing position with a short delivery stride. Yeah. You're stopping yourself from your hip going around and your leg going around. And that's perfect. When you, right there, what you just demonstrated was a very good coming over. Straight there, straight, straight powerful leg. Yeah. And I didn't see no beamers there, and maybe you haven't thought about it, but the higher you, the higher you get, the higher you get, the more easy it is to come down, drag downwards. As an off spinner, yeah. you want to keep your fingers on the ball as long as possible. If you're in this position, say Crap's leg, yeah. you will release it, say here. If I'm in a higher position, I will release the ball here, a bit later. Yeah. Does that make sense? So let me say it again. If you've got Crap's leg and you're low, you're gonna bowl the ball here just to get the ball down. If I'm in a higher position, I've released it slightly longer. 
I kept my fingers on the board a bit more longer. Yeah. As a result, I'm imparting more revs on it because I've just kept my fingers on the board as long as possible. This is why guys who use their wrist more, they will then use your wrist, wrist, wrist. You're using so much wrist, your fingers are on the ball for that split second longer. You're creating more revs. And there's no chance of you not spinning the ball. You're gonna create more revs than any, anyone. I used to bowl, like, I had another way of bowling off spin. I had like a variation of off spin, but only a good batsman would pick it because it would yeah. the turn the same way. Yeah, yeah. But it would look different. It just goes the same way. I don't turn it the other way. It just goes the same way, but it looks different. A good batsman will see this and they think, oh, it's gonna be different. It could be different. It, there's a good tricks about that which well I'm just saying it for the sake of showing it yeah. because obviously this has got nothing to do with today yeah, yeah, yeah. if I show the back of my hand yeah. I can bowl a top spinner a dosa and an off spinner because if I twist so much yeah. they see the back of the hand I've over twisted and if you've seen any of my dosa videos I talk about to get the ball back on target you have to flick the wrist break the wrist yeah. if, you, if you keep the wrist locked you bowl a dosa if you break the wrist you bowl an off spinner yeah, they see the back of the hand they think oh dosa but last second you just break the wrist they become the off spinner they've now thought they've picked a delivery which they haven't picked <laughs> so you always double guess you say okay has he picked that dosa and they usually think they look at it they go they give you an indication oh you bowled one they always show the wrist oh, fair enough I'll bowl that again I'll just show the off break this time and I'll show in the back of the hand they're confused I just have to make sure I bowl it on the stump so it's LBW because it's amazing I've had that thought in my head but yeah. I've never understood what I'm doing I just know that I can turn it the same way using a different action yeah. or different hand grip. And this is why a lot of cricketers who practice the dusra can never bowl the dusra. The reason why is they don't lock their wrist. They bowl it and their wrist just breaks on impact. Yeah, I keep breaking. And one reason why is if you over pivot, you have to get the ball back on target by breaking your wrist. You won't know that unless you've got a super slow-mo camera. No. Or someone's told you about it on YouTube on how to play cricket. Yeah? <laughs> you get me? <laughs> Go for it. Stand there and bowl a few more. So let's let's do exactly what you're doing. Yeah. From a short one, you can go a bit wider here. Yeah. That means you're actually bending your back. And this foot cannot be in this position from here because you've actually got a big delivery stride. This is where the momentum comes in as well. Like Shane Warne and Yasser Shah, they walk in. Yeah. They, oh, Yasser Shah pounds in, but Shane Warne walks in. And the last two steps is a massive, massive momentum difference yeah. from here to here. Yeah. Your momentum is the same all the way. Do I need to make it? So if I'm standing here, I would be going, I would be following through. This is going to be my follow through. I'm here, I'm bending my back. I've created all this extra momentum. This momentum comes from my hands, my fingers, that can only be implanted back onto the ball. What that means is I'm spinning the ball now because I've created extra momentum. It makes the sense. The reason why I'm not gone. pushing through is you, I'm trying to just get the work hip on it. Drive, yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm not. I think your hip drive is okay, but okay. hip drive also works if you've just created momentum because that could only go in one direction straight. Yeah. Yeah. So the extra momentum you're creating is making you go down the wicket more. So it actually helps your hip drive without you thinking about it because you've actually just done a normal stance and you followed through. And from here, the chance of you bowling like this is very minimal. You need to get this nice and wide, give it a good rip, and you're fine. Without thinking about it, you've got your arms and hips and everything going in one direction, which is straight. That's where you want it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and change the momentum. Yep, so stand there and then show momentum. And that's actually funny because that's the first one you genuinely spun and you actually bought it flat and fast. How did that happen? And people don't realize it. The reason why is you've created, when captain says, try the ball a bit more. I can spin the ball more at times by bowling flat because your arm match is so fast, all that momentum, that energy has to go somewhere. Yeah. It goes up the arm, all the way down to your wrist. It goes back onto that uh, ball. What is it? What does it turn into? Revs. Murray Lee has got the fastest arm action for a spinner ever. They compared his stats because when he did his uh, biomechanics, they said your arm action is as fast as a fast bowler. Oh really? And it is. And I've got actions of myself and when I bowl it, it is so quick from side on, you're thinking that's crazy, but it has to go somewhere that momentum, that energy. The energy goes back into your fingers, goes into your wrist. 
Yeah, and I can tell you straight, I, and I can show you right now what I'm talking about. If you just stand here without using any hand speed or uh, your elbows don't move, you can't get anything. This is why finger spin is almost like obsolete for me. Like for me, it's, the, it's a backwards way of thinking cricket. You've got to use a bit of wrist. You've got to use speed with your arm. Yeah. The best way to bowl it is to bowl it with a quick arm action. The ball has to come out slowly. If you master that, you're a cricketer. You're a proper cricketer. You're getting revs on the ball. You're getting all the res. The res turns into dip. It turns into uh, drift. It turns into everything. Reaction off the wicket. That can only happen if you've got fast follow through. Not Don Best where you've got fast arm action he bought side spinners and, um, and because he's got poor action we go uh, across himself he can't translate that into genuine top spin off spin action Nathan Lyon does he's got obviously normal action yeah it's a bit pacey because he's one of the greatest spinners ever but how does a guy who's bowling the same pace as Don Bess get that ball to dip and bounce and turn first up he's got better action he's getting over himself pivot perfectly and he's creating not just off spin revs he's creating top spin off spin revs so he's now getting dip and bounce and a bit of turn and what Don Best does he bowls proper side spin revs that can only go one direction straight unless it's a turning wicket and if it's a turning wicket then that means Joe Root will be getting more wickets than him which he normally does because he spins it more as an off spinner you've probably yeah. seen in these videos yeah. India out bowled him and South Africa out bowled him that's because um, he's got a better wrist position he's bowling at 45 degrees and thankfully, what you don't do is bowl side spin. No, I bowl. You bowl over the top at least. Yeah. And that ball you bowl there was your biggest spinner because you created extra momentum. That's what you're going to bowl another two, three balls. Exactly the same. If anyone says to me you're not a bowler after that ball, I'll <laughs> slap him in the face. What happened there? Tell me what happened there. I had a lot of bounces. Mate, that is nuts. This is how I've bought bounces. I've done it many times, especially on wickets that we play on. They're not yeah. hard wickets. They're not like oval laws, international wickets where the hard, wicket is hard. Yeah. We use spongy wickets. Spongy wickets mean tennis ball bounce. You bowl that yeah. with that drive and momentum, mate, the ball, they're on the front foot, pew, past their head. Right. Beamers, they're on the back foot, going past their head. That is unplayable. That's good, man. You see how far outside off it's turning? That was good. Yeah. And you're, you're doing it from a standing position. So now what I want you to do, I want you to walk in. And then last second, I want you to do that little skip. But this is how wide I want you. Before you were here. Okay. I want you here now, so you have a straight leg, and then you can just finish off your action. If you want to, you can just walk in. Very simple one. If you bring this leg up, yeah. that leg can only come in one direction, downwards. Okay. And if you do it upwards, you, you won't be doing it like that. You will be doing it straight leg. This is why when I walk in a bar at times, the high knee, the high knee can only go down in a straight line and it has to be a brace knee. Guys who have high knees, yep, you have to land with a brace knee. Otherwise, you'll kind of fall on the floor. Yes. So this is why, get the knee up. It creates energy as well. This comes down, this makes this come over and you've got a bigger momentum in the last second and obviously all that energy goes into your fingers, goes into the ball. Yeah? Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So, when you jump up, high knee. Okay. Yeah, keep it going. Ah. So what you're doing now is you're going into your delivery stride, you're looking like this. Yeah. That means you're leaning back before you were in this position. Oh. Yeah? This means your back is not leaning backwards. Yeah? You really thought about that one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've said before, if you just go a bit more, a bit more wider, it will go more straighter. You'll bend your arm a bit more and back a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Your last delivery start has to be a big one. It has to be a big one. And that way, if you bowl it, you should be following through a one step minimum. And don't just stop there. You bowl it and you have to go down the wicket one more step just to decelerate that uh, momentum. What you're doing is you're keeping your head very stationary and, s and you're not moving. Ajmal and Hafiz did the same. They come into a delivery and they literally have a pause. And they're the only cricketers that I can think of at the top yeah, of my head had who, a, had a, yeah. who had a pause. Yeah. It's very bad in the sense that your momentum isn't going down the wick here, as in your energy stops. But what they do is they've got a big explosion at the last second. Ajman has got leaning backwards, 
but then he whips forward. He's done this whip motion to create this extra energy which he has to compensate for for standing and doing literally a stop position. Because Ajman, as I said, Hafiz, they both stop and then they bowl it. So where did they get that momentum from? Yeah. He's got a whip motion. Yeah. And this is why I say, if you do have a leaning back motion, which I've done in one of my videos, I don't want you to lean backwards sideways, I want you to lean straight back. At least your momentum is going down the wicket. The last stride is the most important stride. You create energy there, that can only go back onto the ball. It is. And what you just practiced right there in front of me was a straight knee. You realize now, you realize now that you got to get on your tiptoes and yeah. go over. I won't come over. It's like, it's like I'm turning the door. Oh, I know that's yeah, that's what they say. It's like, but you're doing it now. You doing? And you're for the first time I've seen a massive brace. And I haven't talked much about the brace with you yeah. or your follow through. I've said what to do. And I said to you before as well, if you keep a small stride, automatically this will be braced. If it's automatically braced, automatically you'll fall over yourself. Only thing I've told you to do now is make sure this is nice and wide. That momentum you create will be your delivery stride. Which means from this position, can you see my arm? I'm already falling over. My leg, my body's in this position. I'm not here. That's no energy, mate. I'm here. That's my energy. My body is in a 45 degree angle pointing that way. That can only be me because I've created revs with my hands. I haven't even made an effort to move my arm backwards because in this position it's automatically there. Yeah. In this position my arm is here, it's dead. Get me? So it's not like I'm really working on my arm position, I'm not working on it. I've just done this. As I said before, everything works from the feet upwards. You do this right, without knowing it, my arm's gone all the way back here. This has come all the way around. Okay. You get me? Yeah. This is important, the last delivery struggle, but people don't realise. People always talk about how you bowl. If you can think about your momentum going in one direction and you can exploit that decrease, that can only result in you spinning the ball being the greatest spinner ever because you will create that dip, revs, bounce, everything the spinner needs, isn't it? Leaning over a touch. A little bit. Can you see the gap between, it's a bit wide? You got a gap here? It should be here. If you're straight, you have to be like this. Because you've got a slightly bit of a gap, yeah. you can afford to lean over because you're stable now. Because this is now weight going this way, that means your head can go this way to, to balance itself. If you bring this back, this becomes straight again. Instead of doing it from here, it has to be behind itself. Now, there is one way of getting around it if you take a bit of an angle. If you take a bit of an angle and walk a bowl it, you, naturally you will be in this position. But do I want you to do that? Maybe. You can try it. You were you bowling from here before? Coming from a very small angle from here. It was better. Only thing you ran in front of the wicket, which is fine. But no, it was okay. This is why boat off spinners sometimes come in from a little angle. Because from here, you now get into a side position without making much of an effort. Because you already are in a side position when you're walking in. Look, can you see? Yeah. Chest is this way, coming in sideways. I've hardly made an effort and I'm ready side on. That's why you take that little bit of a side on angle just to help you. Yeah, what you did there was good. You were looking over your shoulder properly. Yeah. And when you went over, because you're not twisting so much, that ragged. Yeah. Because you came down like this in this line and you weren't leaning over. I'm gonna also change your line now. I'm gonna make you go around the wicket. The reason why spinners bowl better to left uh, around the wicket than over the wicket. Um, let's give an example. Mona Lee's success rate as an off spinner going over the wicket, much more. Um, Graham Swan, left-handers, he bowls better to left-handers. It's not a case of I bowl better to left-handers, it's a case of, yeah, the ball's going away from the bat. When you're going from this side of, um, from around the wicket, you have to do more of a twist. You do less of a twist here, left-handed you've got to do more of a twist because you've got this extra angle to create from here to here. Yeah. So from here you have to twist more, that extra little bit of twist means the ball's going to spin more, it's going to dip more, it's going to rag more. That's what it is. It's not always the case of oh, the ball's going away from the bat, it's because you're using the extra momentum. Around the wicket to left-hander, this is a place where you can afford to land like this. And I won't say to you, oh, you're over-pivoting. 
Yeah. Because you have to over pivot. Because your angle is now going into the batsman. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. You happy with that? I am. That ripped. Uh, it was good action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same same rules apply when you come in. Not too big. You were just about here this time. Oh. That's quite big. It happens when you're running hard. Yeah. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to come in. Okay, I want you to come in. I want you to come in like that. And then, bang. And you've got a nice, nice um, shadow here to do a big follow through for the first time ever. You won't, you won't achieve this, but if you do, yeah. you might find better results. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got a nice thing to hit. You got to hit this. Okay. That's your, that's your new little test. So two things to look at when you bowl from around the wicket. You take a wide angle. Yeah. That's a variation you can do it even in the stock delivery, but you got to make sure you're spinning the ball. Otherwise, it just slides onto the bat. Yeah. Especially on wickets which are slightly green, if you get a line a bit straight, with that angle, it's onto the hips mate, it's a little flick. Maybe think about starting off more straighter, near the umpire. Because the difference between here and here is one step. The difference between here and here is two steps now. That means you've got to really work on something different now. I wouldn't start from this angle, I'll start off close to the wicket. Yeah. When I get my line right, because my angles are going to be almost the same, your run up's going to be almost the same, everything's almost the same. You start off close to wicket, when you get confident, you do variation and then you can start off your, finish off your whole spell this way. Because by then you'll be getting your arm and everything right, yeah? I say that and the last second you move away, but that's fine. Yeah. That's okay because a lot of cricketers obviously even here, come in. you come in which is fine. But that means you got to come in even closer. Tell umpire move back, yeah. come in closer. But yeah, I wouldn't start too wide, man. Okay. Head went over though. That's fine, but your head was actually quite straight on on uh, on delivery, yeah. and that's spinning now. Now you're now you think, oh crap, I'm spinning it too much, isn't it? Yeah. So you might think about, okay, let me take an angle now. And fire it into the legs. Yeah. At least if it rags, it won't be ragging wide so they can play the cut shot. Yeah. That's just a thought process, but right now we're just practicing so you're gonna bowl for normal still. It's good. You at least you're you're getting on the on the pivot and you're going over yourself, you've got high arm action and your leg is straight as well. And that's one of the things I wanted to sort out today. It looks like you've been doing it every ball now almost. So you're not collapsing your leg. Good thing is, this leg is going higher. Yeah. And yeah, okay, it might be going around a bit, but at least it's going higher, so it comes straight down. So that creates... Um, Everything you've done today, yeah. like, it's a lot to learn. It is. And I'm learning it. Yeah, yeah. And you actually I'm actually... Sure that I think, help me if you didn't record it. And the, you recording it is such a big... But you haven't even seen the recording yet. No. Exactly. Right now we're talking about it, and you're, you're rectifying it, and I'm trying to disturb your thought process. It seems like you're getting it right. Yeah. You just have to go home and do this mental notes as well. I made notes. I made notes. My every God. Game and every training. I write so many notes. My notes change every week, but yeah. I still write notes. I've got I've got a new red book. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is going to be a different one. This is going to be a massive one for you. Yeah. You write down your own notes. Yeah. Eventually, in three you know a month's time or four four weeks time, this will come out as well. Yeah. Give it two weeks. <laughs> Whenever you can. <laughs> Last ball, and then get your pads on, and I'll bowl to you. That was a very good one. Okay, leg side a bit, but mate, the guy's going to play on the leg side. That's straightening, mate. It's top edges here. Yeah. That's a good one. We're going to leave on that very good note. Cool. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah. Yorker is hit into the gap, and that's 50. Incredible stuff, really, is one hell of a effort from him. He loves it. The fans are loving it. The dugout is incredibly happy because they're seeing a sensational 